Hey guys, this is Nurse Howie, and if you've ever floated to a unit before, you can understand how scary it is. Now, one of my biggest fears was floating to a pediatric ICU at a different unit that I've never been familiar with. And so I thought that I would never ever go to a PICU because I don't mind death and gore, but I really, really mind if somebody is suffering. And I super duper mind if that suffering person or patient is a kid. So I just thought, oh, I'm never gonna go see the kids over at PICU because I just can't handle that. And I'm afraid I'm gonna make a mistake. But you know what? As a travel and a float nurse, I am required to go to some places that I may not be completely familiar with. And here's how you can learn how to do that by seeing the, my example and how I was able to get through a very, very long shift at the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit or the PICU. So I did float to the Pediatric ICU, the PICU, and I floated there because there was a need for nursing staff. I was hesitant at first because I've never cared for tiny humans before. Nursing school emphasizes incorrect dosage calculations and fail you if you get one problem wrong. Now the stakes are double when toddlers and infants are involved because an error in dosage calculation theoretically leads to greater damage to the body. Now why is this important? Well, because you never know if you have to float to another unit as a nurse. And sometimes things can happen, such as strikes or another nurse calling out at the last minute or someone going on maternity leave. Either way, you have to be ready to practice at another unit and but most importantly, do it safely because you don't want to lose your nursing license. And more importantly, you don't want to kill anyone. Now, people sometimes think that this is an exaggeration, but trust me, there are a lot of scenarios where you could find yourself in a situation that can severely endanger someone. That type of guilt is something that you live with for the rest of your life. And I've heard many stories about it, trust me. Okay, now back to the lighter stuff. Analyze your surroundings. This is one of the good tips that you should have when you first walk in. Sometimes you're so overwhelmed with self-doubt that you forget to analyze your surroundings to the unit. Now, I think the first thing I did was to acclimate to the unit culture. I said hi to the people that seemed friendly, and I introduced myself to the charge nurse, which is the nurse in charge. Then I verified what my patient room assignments are and which offgoing nurse would be giving me my report. Next, I did a quick assessment on my patients, and here's what's different about peds. The parents. Now, of course I said hi to them, and it was weird discussing treatment plans with them instead of the patient that was in front of me. But in this case, the patients were not only children, but they were sedated too. So I just switched focus and just planned on talking to the parents. Once I got the introductions out of the way, I did my usual quick IC room, ICU room assessments, which involves doing a fast assessment on my patient, checking if the suction machine is on and set up, and making sure I know where the Ambu bag is, which is a bag valve mask, and seeing if the drips need to be refilled. Next, I go into the nursing station, log into my computer, and catch up on the documentation to get a better feel for the child's demographics, medical history, medication regimen, and treatment plan. And then I can update the parents on that as well. Then I plan out my shift. This involves making sure I have routines down such as, again, medication regimen, the end of shift cleanup and bath, and time for charting. But it also gives me an opportunity to search for gaps in the timeline to see when I can do procedures that doctors requested but the day nurses were unable to complete. For example, CAT scans and especially MRIs take a long time. And sometimes the patient isn't stable enough to do it in the daytime, so night nurses will plan to perform these long, potentially dangerous, but completely valid diagnostic tests so that the medical team can have the results by the next morning. Well, another example is that one of my pediatric patients had a head injury. So you always wear your helmets, kids, and watch out for those scooters. But they're always lying with the head of the bed up at a 30 to, 45 de 30 to 45 degree angle. Now, the reason for this is because it helps the patient's intracranial pressure, the ICP, remain at a safe number. You don't want the head of the bed too low or too high because you don't want to cause more damage or more pressure to the patient whose brain is already completely sensitive. Now with all that in mind, pun intended, I had to make time to test out the patient's reaction if I place them flat on the bed for at least 30 minutes. That way when they do go to the CAT scanner, the CT scanner, the operating room table, or any other procedure that requires them to go flat for intubation or an operation, then I know that their brain can handle it. So I update the doctors on that. 
Next, here's a great tip, but it's not really explained well, but you have to ask questions. Now, I hate this about nursing because asking questions make me f feel like I'm not independent. And some nurses completely misconstrue this as a sign that I don't know what I'm doing. But most of the nurses and supervisors understand that floating to the unit, which means this is not my home unit, is really kind of scary and I'm not familiar with it. So there are some procedures that I may be rusty with and equipment such as extra ventricular drains, EVDs, that many neuro ICU patients have set up to fluids to receive fluids, uh, to drain fluids and um, relieve pressure from the brain. Now, unfortunately, the concerns I have with questions are all self-doubt and my duty to be a safe nurse overcomes my insecurities at appearing less knowledgeable about my job. Luckily, the charge nurse introduced himself and offered to go over the equipment and he downplayed my insecurities by acknowledging that they are sometimes have float nurses and they do understand that not all of them are familiar with everything on the unit so they don't expect us to have everything done perfectly but they do want you to practice safely. So I responded by graciously thanking him for mentioning that and I would gladly accept his help verifying that I did the procedure right. And if it wasn't too much trouble, could he please um, let himself be available so I can ask him questions to make sure I did the right things um, when it comes to procedures? And he was, of course, immediately amenable to this and that, my friends, is how you blow by your insecurities and create a safe environment for the entire nursing unit as well as, as, well as the entire staff, which is better for our patients. So at the end of shift, after an hour or two of panicking to myself silently, <laughs> I was able to calm down and practice nursing safely because I am a safe nurse, but also because I planned out my schedule. And now we're, that we're at the end of my shift, and the schedule that I planned out allowed me to have extra occurrences so that I can make sure that patients were at ease and that the parents were at ease because they could see that I wasn't flustered because I had extra time to deal with things that came up. So now this picture of me is when I was at the ICU and at the end of the shift and I was so tired but I was also feeling good about my day. The charge nurse and the supervisor thanked me for stepping in and doing a great job which basically means that they didn't have to worry about me and my patients so much. So that means they could focus on their own jobs and not have to worry about the unit safety. So guys I hope this helped you out a lot and I hope this allays a little bit of your fears if you have to travel to a dif different nursing unit and for me at least especially the pediatric intensive care unit. Now you might be com familiar and comfortable with working with pediatrics, but I was not. But this, these tips that I gave you hopefully will help you be able to become more acclimated to the unit faster and then also open yourself up to a safer environment and then as a result, practice nursing safely. And then hopefully when you plan out your day or your shift, then you also add blocks to doing regular things like medication administration, taking the patient to do some valid diagnostic procedures, um, but also having a little bit of time just in case the patient doesn't do so well. Um, you know that you're, you're not completely um, behind in your charting um, and that you also uh, have time to be able to take care of the patients, um, manage the parents, and also uh, talk to the other nurses to see if you can get some help. And hopefully you've already created a rapport uh, by following the tips that I just gave you. And that all in all, you get to have a very safe, very good and hopefully um, uh, amazing shift where you can make a difference in somebody's lives and not just the kids but also the parents and the rest of the families as well okay guys if you have any questions and you want me to do a certain video please uh, leave a comment below like and subscribe uh, there are a couple of videos that I show uh, where it's what it's like to be a come a new grad nurse but also a float travel nurse and um, I want you to go see if you can check that out uh, so if you like it, again, like and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Nurse Howie out.